Kevin Williams here on the Shore Sports Network, and I'm delighted to spend a couple of minutes chatting with Darren Mabry, certainly a name familiar to any basketball fan here at the Jersey Shore. Had an incredible career at Manasquan High School. Dara, back in the news recently, you might have read Greg Lerner's story on our website as uh, she has decided to transfer from Virginia Tech to Notre Dame, a school she's fairly familiar with. And here, as we get set to start the summer at the Jersey Shore, she's good enough to give us a few minutes. Dara, thank you very much for spending some time with us. Thank you for having me today. Pleasure. So uh, it's got to be exciting. I, I mean, uh, uh, let's sort of backtrack a little bit. You had two very good years at Virginia Tech. Uh, averaged just about 12 points a game both years. Uh, 155 three-pointers. I mean, you were outstanding. So, you know, what was the main reason for you deciding after two years there to transfer? Um, you know, stats stats aren't everything. So there's a lot more that goes into it. And um, to keep it simple, I would just say that I knew it was time for me to find a new place um, for a lot of reasons. And I made the decision and I think it was the best decision for me. Now, did you do you have any regrets in choosing Virginia Tech originally for your first two seasons? No, not at all. Um, I tried to live like it's kind of cliche. I tried to live without regretting anything because I did have a good time at that school and it did teach me a lot um, on and off the court. I learned a lot at that school. So no, I definitely do not regret going there. And I built some really nice relationships um, that will definitely last a lifetime. You know, you're like one of the great winners of all time in the history of the Shore Conference. I mean, losing was such a rarity to you. I know your first year with the Hokies, the team had a losing record, but last season was pretty good, 21-9 and nine, and likely headed to the NCAA tournament before everything got shut down. So it wasn't like you're leaving after a bad season for the school. Right. Um, yeah, you know, the first year was definitely up and down, a big obstacle course, but um, – Last year was better. We had a good team. Yeah, we definitely would have made the NCAA tournament. But, um, you know, that speaks for itself. Uh, I was on a good team. I was with good players. And, you know, things don't work out the way they're supposed to all the time. All right. So at the point you decide you're going to transfer, can you take me through the process a little bit about the decision making from that point on? You know, what other schools did you consider and what eventually led you to make the final decision to go to Notre Dame? Um, well, you kind of know in your gut when it's time for a change. So, uh, I think my parents definitely saw it coming and my family knew it was going to happen, uh, cause they know me best. So, you know, I decided to put my name in the portal and my recruiting took off immediately. Uh, it was in the middle of March and I talked to a lot of schools, uh, ACC and non ACC and, I came down to three schools, which were uh, Arizona, UCLA, and Notre Dame, and I loved all three. I loved what they were about, but at the end of the day, I had to follow my heart, and my heart was with Notre Dame, and I'm proud of myself and very confident in my decision. Yeah, not easy to give up the sunshine of Arizona or California either. It's definitely not easy. It's <laughs> not easy to give up anything from the best universities in the country, uh, academically and on the court, and... Um, they're both great programs. Uh, they're built with great people. Um, they have a winning record. They're both top 25 in the country, definitely uh, NCAA tournament teams. Um, and they were both going to compete to win a Pac-12. So I loved everything about them, but I just had to follow my heart. I'm wondering, were those schools, those two schools you mentioned, ones that you were considered before making your original decision on Virginia Tech when you were still in high school? Um, Arizona wasn't, uh, they had a different coaching staff at the time and, uh, UCLA a little bit, um, but not much, but this time, this time around it was different. Well, certainly Notre Dame is a place you're somewhat familiar with. I mean, your, your Very family good. probably knows it all, like, like, like they know Belmar. I mean, uh, uh, both your sisters obviously played there and we'll get in that to that a little bit. Um, was that familiarity for you a big plus in making this decision? Yeah, definitely. Especially with what's going on right now in the world um, with COVID. It's an easy transition. Um, the other schools are definitely very far away. Um, and I'm just familiar with it. You know, I know the school. I know the team. I know the coaching staff. Um, I know what they're about academically. 
So I would say that definitely played a little bit in uh, my decision making. But um, I would say I'm happy that it's going to be an easy transition. So some change on that coaching staff, the Hall of Famer uh, Muffet McGraw retired after last season, 32 years, 900 plus wins, nine trips to the final four, two national championships. And here comes a new coach, but clearly one that's very familiar with the program. And in addition, there's also another familiar face on the on the Fighting Irish bench. So tell me a little bit about the new coach and and right. the no other sort of new coach, but one you've known your entire life. Right. Um, so when Muffet McGraw was still the coach, she was recruiting me. Um, and then when she stepped down uh, and we heard the news that Neil Ivy was going to be the head coach, nothing changed. Um, Neil has been a big part of my life since I was younger. Um, she's always a person that I reached out to when I needed advice or I needed someone to talk to. Um, she basically watched me grow up uh, as a player and a person. So none of that changed. And um, it, it was upsetting But when Coach McGraw stepped down. But I have so much respect for her and everything that she's done for uh, me and my family and just the person she is and how she teaches her uh, players to grow up to be powerful young women, not just basketball players. Um, yes, my sister is on the bench uh, as a coach. That's a very unique situation, but, you know, I've been learning from her my whole life, and I'm very excited to learn from her uh, in a professional atmosphere and in a different environment. Um, you know, our relationship might change a little bit, but I think it was just an opportunity that I couldn't, I couldn't take. Yeah, you're, of course, that being your oldest sister, Michaela, who uh, was part of the Notre Dame program, went to the championship game a couple of uh, couple of times that is now an assistant uh, and obviously someone that uh, we always said some of the best basketball games maybe were in your backyard. Uh, we didn't get a chance to see them, but uh, obviously, like you said, has had such a great influence. Of course, your other sister, the middle one, Marina, uh, won a national title at Notre Dame as a junior in 2018. And correct me if I'm wrong, I know she's been playing overseas a little bit, and I think in the WNBA. Um, what kind of influence, if any, did she have when you were looking to make this decision? I mean, did you consult both your sisters quite a bit, or was this a Dara Mabry call? Um. I think the process, it involves your family because um, that's how it's supposed to go. You know, they uh, they open your mind up to, uh, you know, things that you might not think about if you were to go through it by yourself. Um, but I would say my sisters, you know, my older sister as a coach was kind of in a weird position, but it didn't affect us. Um, they, they were uh, honest with me. Obviously, you know, we want you to go to Notre Dame, but of course, we're your sisters and we're your family and we respect you and we be good with any decision you make. You know, we support you no matter what. Um, that was kind of the occurring theme that happened throughout the recruiting process, I would say. But, um, yeah, you're right. Marina was playing overseas and uh, then she got traded from the Sparks. But, you know, of course, Notre Dame helped her with that. She played under Coach McGraw and that's also one of the reasons why I chose Notre Dame because I know it's a great setup for me, what I want to do after my college career. You know, it's interesting, of course, you followed both of them in some extent at Manasquan, and a lot of us, us in the media would talk about the pressure on you as being the third, and it was something we never saw. You never played, I mean, when you were a freshman, you were as tough as anyone on the court, you never shied away, but now again, I'd assume there's someone, some people that might assume, well, here's pressure again. You know, one sister won a national championship, the other went to the finals twice, and here you come walking into that you know, that whole situation. Do you feel any pressure at all on that? No. Um, <laughs> I'm up for any challenge. Um, that's why I went to a school like this. Uh, I want to compete for an ACC title. I want to compete for a national championship. And um, I've learned uh, over the years to look at everything with a positive mindset. So, you know, I get to go compete uh, for records and wins against my sister at the best university in the country. So I think all of this is just a great opportunity, and I couldn't be in a better position to succeed. Correct me if I'm wrong. You do have to sit out next year, uh, or you're applying for a wait. What you are sitting out next year? Um, most likely, it's yeah. it's hard to tell right now. I, I can't really give you an answer on that. Yeah, I got you. But you yeah. have two years of eligibility left, no matter yeah. what. No matter what, yeah. 
How about your major? You know, what what do you plan on studying or what, you know, I don't know if it's the same thing you were at Virginia Tech, but what does Dara Mabry want to do after basketball? Um, at Virginia Tech, I was majoring in sports media analytics with a concentration of multimedia journalism. And, uh, you know, at some schools they have different majors, but it's the same focus. I'll be learning the same things. I do hope to be in front of the camera one day, um, whether that's on ESPN, uh, whether I can be on the news or have a talk show or even bar stool, matter of fact, any of it. Um, I do want to be in front of the camera. So at Notre Dame, I'll be studying film, television, and theater with a focus of television. And um, it's, it's very hands-on learning, visual learning, a lot of projects, that kind of thing. And I'm really excited. Yeah, because you've never been afraid to speak your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sure you saw that firsthand on and off the court. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Let me ask you this. Um, you know, we have been in this pandemic, obviously. You came home, and I know I'm, I'm trying, you know, you mentioned to me a couple minutes ago you have four dogs. You also have two sisters and two brothers. Have all of you, for any of this period, been in the house together? Yes, um, we have. <laughs> have, in fact, been in the house all together at one time. Um, but... Once again, it's it's so positive. Uh, it's it's a happy place here. It's still competitive, um, and we can't make up that time for you know when we're traveling during the season and when we only get a couple of days at Christmas. Um, this time together has really been cherished and valued by all of my family family members. I was going to say, I know it's been crazy. I'm sure the food bills went up a little bit, but I have a feeling your parents are very happy to have this time together with all of you. The food bills probably went up a couple hundred dollars, but <laughs> once again, you know, my mom, the look on her face when she saw all of us home and she just, she couldn't stop talking about when's the last time all of us have been home together. Yeah. One of the few positives of this horrible time has been families getting to spend some time together, right? It really teaches you a lot. Uh, this pandemic has taught me a lot about not only my family, but, you know, basketball, you don't have access to a gym. You might not have access to an outdoor court. But if you care about it that much, you'll find a way to get better. And I think this pandemic has definitely benefited me. Well, summer at the shore is a great time. So what will you be doing this summer before you head out to South Bend? I've actually hit the beach a few times. Um, I've been taking I got a I got a dog when I was in Blacksburg. And then he came home to New Jersey, so I have time with him now. Uh, he's a little puppy. So I've been, you know, taking him for walks. I uh, take advantage of the heat. I do my workouts outside a lot. And uh, I've been helping some of the girls uh, around here, the young girls. I've been coaching them. So it's fun. Uh, you know, it feels like it feels like a long summer, which yeah, likely I wouldn't get if we weren't in a pandemic. Well, uh, I really appreciate you taking some time, and uh, it's exciting for you and your family. Uh, all of uh, all of the Shore basketball fans were really looking forward to seeing you put on that ND uniform, uh, and and I'm sure you are as well. So I appreciate it. I wish you uh, an enjoyable summer and all the best when you head to South Bend. Of course, thank you so much. Darren Mabry, of course, uh, on her way from the Jersey Shore to South Bend, a trip that she won't have any trouble making. It's Kevin Williams on the Shore Sports Network. Thanks for watching.